these two videos here, we're going to see B lines in both of them, but there's actually some subtle differences that exist and can indicate to us what type of pathology is present. Today in this video, we're going to go through what those differences are and what that might represent to us and the findings that those could be. Remember that findings on lung ultrasound are not specific always to certain pathologies, but they can represent different things to us and based off of those and using clinical data, we can determine what the cause of those different findings are. I typically think of this being uh, either a cardiac or a pulmonary problem, and a lot of time when being a pulmonary problem uh, can be infectious. Now there are some different causes in the lungs that we'll look at here that can give us some different findings, but today we're going to discuss um, B lines and then uh, what occurs when we see an irregular pleural line. So today, again, we're going to reflect back to always our binary questions on lung ultrasound. And we've already been through is their lung sliding and are there B lines in previous videos? And if you haven't had a chance to watch those, I'll put some links in the description below and, and put some tags here so you can get to those. But what we wanna talk about today in this video is, is the plural line irregular? And when we talk about the plural line being irregular, the most common thing, with common things being common, is that it's gonna be infection. Now, in the international guidelines that came out several years ago, they talk about it being ARDS, which we saw a lot of this during COVID, um, but it can also just represent early pneumonia if you're finding it in a focal area or a focal region. And seeing those subpleural consolidations in that irregular pleural line should make you think infection. Now there are other things that can cause it, um, which again, those things could be similar to pulmonary fibrosis, but hopefully you have a good history on the patient or you have some prior imaging, some things that can indicate to you that this is what their baseline is or that they have pulmonary fibrosis. Um, and that could be a cause of finding an irregular pleural line with some subpleural abnormalities. One of the things that they didn't necessarily indicate um, with these irregular pleural lines and the subpleural uh, consolidations in the guidelines was uh, metastases and, and masses. They do address it in a different area within the guidelines, but um, the findings we're gonna look at today could be metastases, and I've seen those before. They don't as typical, um, of them, they do not typically have a comet tail coming off them, um, but we'll discuss that a little bit further uh, later on. So keep in mind that when we do pulmonary ultrasound or thoracic ultrasound, we're going to look at four regions on both sides for a total of eight regions, and that's gonna be our basic uh, scanning protocol. We're gonna have our probe marker towards the head, and we're gonna get an image similar to this, and we're gonna have uh, some ribs with rib uh, shadows in there, and then uh, some rib spaces and in those rib spaces we're going to be looking at this pleural line right there and to trying to determine whether there are findings at that pleural line and we're going to do that through all eight of these regions now when we get to the right um, right side here at zone four we're going to look at the uh, liver here and we're going to look for the diaphragm this is a typical place we'll find a, have a lot of findings and if we get to zone four on the left we're gonna then look here at the spleen. And again, we're gonna define uh, the diaphragm well there and look for pathologies in those areas. If, however, you have a high suspicion and you scan all four zones bilaterally and you're not finding that pneumonia or you're not finding uh, those B lines or the pathology that you're looking for, you should consider uh, scanning zone five and six. This is not our standard zones and you don't always have to do these, but uh, if you have a high suspicion and you're not seeing anything in zones one through four bilaterally, you should consider uh, scanning zone five and six. And again, to reflect back on COVID, this is where we'd see a lot of early COVID and development of ARDS in those patients. And again, we'll just look at those rib spaces, looking for the pleural uh, line and assessing what's going on at that pleural line. Now, when we talk about what an alveoli should look like. It should be aerated. There should just, you know, it should be an open sack of air. But as we progress to, through to interstitial syndrome, both the alveoli and the interstitial tissue between the alveoli are gonna to start to fill with fluid. As they fill with fluid, um, we'll start to see those B lines. Now, if they progress and the alveoli become completely full of fluid and the interstitial tissues becomes full of fluid, we will develop a consolidated area of the lung and that's what will help us see an irregular pleural line with that being the most common. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look right here at this, and this is back to the original uh, video that was on the right, and we see a subplural consolidation, and we're going to see it um, right over in this area, and this can also be called a uh, C line, um, and it will be a little consolidation, and it will have a um, some uh, comet tail coming off of a reverberation artifact typically, and that's pretty most likely going to be indicative of infectious process. Not 100%, but majority of the time with common things being common, that's going to be infection. And so if we zoom in here, we, what we can see with this is that right in this area, we have just a little bit of irregularity in the plural line. And you can see the line comes here and then there's a gap and then it drops down. That is gonna be indicative to us of there being uh, some pathology. And what that basically means is that we have uh, consolidated alveoli here um, with completely filled alveoli with fluid, and then we have other areas that are only partially filled, and we're getting our B lines from that and our reverberation artifact. So keep in mind that infection is the most common cause of an irregular pleural line, but it is not the only cause. Um, again, it is going to be the most common cause, but we can also see lung contusion that occurs with that. We can see atelectasis. Uh, it could be a sign of a pulmonary embolism, especially if it's in a wedge shape. And again, as I mentioned before, uh, it could be mass or metastases. When it's a mass and metastases, I haven't quite as often seen um, comet tails coming off of it or uh, C lines. It just looks like a consolidated or um, solid piece of organ there. Now to finish up, we're going to go through some tips here to help you with this. Uh, but also uh, to help you get better at assessing this. So we're going to look at several different examples in different patients and the findings that they have. So first thing is make sure you keep your hand still. A lot of times I see uh, novice uh, clinicians or clinicians that are novice to ultrasound uh, that they're moving their hand a lot and you really can't assess for these subtleties when you're moving your hand. And so you got to anchor your hand and then really assess. And what we can see here is that irregular pleural line. Now it gets a little hard because a lot of that's hiding right behind that rib that we can see right here. This is our rib, um, but we can see that down through this area, as the arrow indicates, that there's an irregularity um, and there's a drop off of that pleural line. And that's gonna indicate to us that there's a subpleural consolidation and then we see that reverberation artifact uh, down through here. Uh, next one, we're going to go ahead and see again. This one is going to be towards the lung base, and we can see that in this area, that uh, in the circled green, that there is some irregular pleural tissue, that it's dis discontinued right here at the pleural line, um, and that we're going to go ahead and see um, that moving in and out as we play the video here. And so again, this can be very subtle, but that's going to be consolidated tissue or the progression of um, some alveoli being fully filled with fluid and then some surrounding ones not and that's why we're going to get that comet tail that's coming coming down uh, right through here as we see this uh, right there. Uh, we're going to go to another example. Uh, so our one thing I didn't mention there that I do have written here on the, the thing on the slide is that if the pathology doesn't come in contact with the pleural line, the external uh, pleural uh, of the pleura and come in contact with the uh, parietal pleura, then you are not going to see these pathologies. So keep that in mind. You could still have them um, deep in the lung tissue and you're not going to see those um, when performing this study. Another thing that you can do, so sometimes as we go and we're just scanning this very small area with the probe marker towards the head, um, we don't get to assess completely what's going on in each rib space quite as well. So we can go ahead and we can rotate the probe if we look over at this left side of the screen. And we can rotate that probe on the patient's right side. We can do that counterclockwise. And if it's on the patient's left side, we're, side, we're going to rotate that clockwise to match the rib spaces. And we're going to open that up and really be able to assess uh, that fluid better or that uh, pleural line better. So as we watch this video here, I want you to see that we see just a little sample of an irregular pleural line, but as we rotate that probe and work in between those rib spaces, we'll notice that there's a larger area that is um, has that subpleural con consolidation and um, also that the pleural line is irregular. Then we're going to go rotate back here and we're going to see back to uh, what we saw before and that it's not quite as evident 
there. So if you find um, isolated bee lines in a, in a rib space or these, or maybe suggestion of an irregular pleural line, go ahead and rotate that probe so that you can further assess that rib space. Here's just another example. So this is a small one. We see a small irregular pleural uh, disruption. It is hiding partially behind that rib space. And we're gonna go ahead and see this video play here and just be able to assess that that irregular pleural line is, is coming off there. And the B lines on this one or the C line coming off of that is not quite as obvious, but we do see that subpleural consolidation. And here's one more. We're gonna go ahead and see that circled again in green. And um, we're gonna go ahead and play that video for you so you can again see that this is a little bit larger in irregular pleural line. But that's going to indicate to us, again, it can be infection, it can be a uh, suggestion of a pulmonary embolism, contusion, uh, atelectasis, or even a mass within the lung. So again, we come back to this, you know, what's the difference? So if we see a pleural line um, that is nice and linear, may not have a subpleural consolidation, it's not irregular, um, I typically, typically I'm going to be thinking um, pulmonary edema, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, and that, that's also going to depend on the distribution of, of the B lines, but that's going to indicate that more to me. And in an irregular pleural line, like we see an example on the right, first thing that comes to mind is going to be infection. Obviously, we've got to apply that to all the clinical data we have, but that's going to be our most common thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this here at uh, Pocus Geek. I um, always am happy to try to offer more education on the use of Pocus in clinical uh, care. If you have any questions about this or other point of care ultrasound related questions, feel free to email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or comment below. Happy scanning.